What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. So as you can see, I'm out here in the Australian rainforest and today I'm doing a bit of a survival video. And just as I started filming this intro, it started pouring down rain. But that's a good topic to get straight up because one of the first things that you're gonna need if you're out in a survival situation is water. So if I was actually in a survival situation, I'd be taking every chance to collect this water, maybe in like a piece of bamboo or a bottle that I find up this creek. But yeah, pretty much what I'm gonna be doing today is trying to find not only a bit of bush tucker, I'm also going to be trying to catch a fish with either my bare hands, this knife right here, or trying to make a primitive trap, and basically just showing you a few survival techniques so if you ever do get in trouble out here in the bush, that you'll know what to do. So I've been doing this kind of stuff my whole life. I've been taught by experts and everything, so I thought I'd like to pass you guys a bit of that information, and if it comes in handy, it comes in handy. If it doesn't, then oh well. Hope you enjoy the video. So let's start heading up this creek. Hopefully we can find some cool stuff. Over there, I've spotted an eel tail catfish, which I might try set up a primitive trap to catch. We'll jump across here real quick. Take a look at that. It's just sitting right there. Now, why it's sitting there, see that circle of rocks right there? That's these catfish nests. And I think this guy can actually see me right now, but they're a very territorial species. And he's probably looking at me right now saying, I dare you to come on my nest. And you know what, I might in a minute because he might attack me. I've been attacked so many times by these catfish, but I think I might be able to set up a trap and maybe catch them, so we'll see how that goes. Just spotted a catfish going right up into the shallows. No. See you right here. Go. Good oh, he's right there. Although I can't see it up in that little channel, I truly believe that it's in there and I think I am gonna build a rock wall to try stop it in there. I think it might be up under that bank or something. I'm not sure, but if not, oh well, let's give it a go. Now, if you were actually in a survival situation, would you be using all of your energy to build a massive rock wall and try catch a catfish? Definitely not. But we're just having a bit of fun today. And if you were actually in a survival situation, it wouldn't be anything like man versus wild kind of thing where you're walking for hours. You'd be trying to save that energy and wait for someone to find you. Just live in that area until someone happens to cross your path and that way you can get rescued. But I'm just having so much fun building this rock wall and I really hope the catfish is in there and I'm not just building it for nothing. But that'd be so cool if I caught it. Oh, that took so much energy. So yeah, don't do that in a survival situation, but I'm just having so much fun. Yeah, hopefully we can get this catfish. I'll go try to scare it out. All right, so I was just about to leave. I spent all that time making that trap right there. Come up to this log and look what I see sitting right under the log. That right there is a catfish tail. I could even make this trap the next step up and literally just put it right here. I might do that real quick, so then there's less water that uh, catfish has and it's easier for me to actually grab it. Let me take my backpack off, so I just made the second one, the catfish is under that log. I'm going to set this up just down here. Oh. Oh. 
You go back up under the log. Okay, let me grab this. Get out, buddy. There he is. Now track him. Look, he's right there. Come on, buddy. Stay still. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Take a look at that. That is how to make a primitive trap and catch a catfish. Oh, oh I just got uh, catfish slime all over my hat. That's all right. Let's go, baby. Take a look at that. So that right there is a good specimen and that's an eel tail catfish. Now, these guys, I've been growing up on this creek system my whole life. And this has been my favorite fish to catch since I was little. You've probably seen on my channel, I've posted heaps of videos catching eel tail catfish. And every time, as you just saw then, that was one of the funnest things that I've ever done, setting up that little trap in the creek. And this is why I love coming down to this creek system so much. So you saw that catfish over there before with that nest. This little fella, or little girl I should say, had another one just down there. So I'm gonna let it go because it'd probably be sitting on eggs on that nest at the moment. And we want the next generation of catfish to be thriving in this creek system. So that's the reason why I'm not gonna eat it. Now, obviously, if I was in a survival situation, what would I do? Yes, I would eat this, 100%. That would keep me fed for a couple weeks, probably not a couple weeks. I'd probably just get hungry and eat it all at once. But wow, what a beautiful catfish right there. Now see these spikes on the top of that? That's why I was being really careful, even when I had it in that little shallow area, because man, these spikes, they hurt. They hurt really bad. If you get spiked by one of them, trust me, you're going to be taking a trip to the hospital. And that's the last thing that you'd need in a survival situation where there's no hospitals around. Let me take my hand off. See those whiskers that this little guy has down on the front here? All catfish have these whiskers and they use that to feel around for their prey, see what rocks and stuff are in the area. And the really cool thing, how they make these catfish nests, you know those circle of rocks that I was showing you before? They actually pick pebbles about this size up in their mouth and drop them into a circular formation to build a nest. So not only birds make nests, but catfish do as well, which is actually crazy. And this is one of the bigger sizes. I'm not sure how big it looks on camera, but they don't get too much bigger than this. But the predators that these guys would have around this area a birds of prey, dingoes, sasquatch. What are you talking to me? Nah, but wow, that's actually awesome. Take a look at that. I might um release him in the shallows and get some footage of him, shall we? Because I've only got one GoPro battery to last me the whole day. I've just spent the first hour filming non-stop. Take a look at that. I should probably kiss a goodbye. I don't know if I should. I definitely shouldn't have, but I don't know why I convinced myself to do that. All right, ladies, buddy. Thank you so much. That was actually awesome. Make sure you like and subscribe, little fella, and you'll be in next week's video. So if I was out in the wild, something like this would be the perfect camping spot. Nice tree cover in the middle of the day because the biggest thing, especially here in Australia, is dehydration and heat stroke. Like, if you're standing out in the sun all day, I've been walking around go, trying to go under from tree to tree, and I've still been, I'm literally sweating right now. So I'd probably use all of this dead wood that has been washed down it would save a lot of energy instead of using a knife to cut all the other trees down and everything. I just use some of that, set up a camp under here. Now, if I had more battery on my GoPro, I'd show you how to make a primitive um, setup, like a primitive camp. But since I don't, I'm gonna be heading back soon after this GoPro runs out. We'll try to do a couple more cool stuff before then. But if you wanna see a primitive shelter in one of my next videos, or even more primitive videos like this, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Drop a like, subscribe to my channel. But let's keep heading up this creek because I want to go swimming so bad. Might do some flips or something. So the thing I love about being in a survival situation is it puts your mind in like a different sense because see this right here, this big mat. Normally, if I was walking up the creek or something, I'd think, oh, it's just a big mat. But now that I'm in that kind of mindset, I'm thinking this could be shelter. This could keep me away from the elements like at night. It could keep me warm if it's cold, so. It's actually kind of cool being in that kind of mindset and thinking what you could use that kind of stuff for when normally we just walk past it. And see this as well, as I was saying before, when you get into that mindset, normally you'd think it's just a plastic bottle or whatever, but this could be used for so many things. Now, obviously the first thing you'd use it for is collecting water. So 
Normally you'd need to boil up water if you're gonna get it out of this creek system because you don't want to get sick or anything. But if you found multiple water bottles, you could even use this to make a primitive shrimp trap and catch your own food. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So just get your knife out. Always carry a knife when you're out here in the bush and see that first little crease right there? Just cut it in like that. All the way around until it comes off. Now I've made these before and trust me, they do work. So the next step, put your bait in just like that. Put the cap over the top. The shrimp crawl in that way. They can't get out. And there's your food sorted if you were in a survival situation. But yeah, I'm going to chuck this in my backpack because you don't want to litter up a creek system like this. It's too awesome. But yeah, let's keep heading up the creek and make that spear. That right there is a catfish. There's another one up there and another one down there. Now, I just showed you how to catch on with your hands, but sometimes, as you can see, they're in bigger pools like this and it'll be a lot harder. You've got no chance of catching one with your hands in a pool like this. But if you were up here with a spear per se, now, here in Australia, you're not allowed to spearfish in fresh water, but if you're in a survival situation, all those rules go out the window. So, I'm going to show you how to make a primitive spear. It's not going to be anything fancy, but it's going to allow you to spear a catfish like that in a shallow creek, just like this. So, how you make the perfect spear is first off finding the perfect tree. And this one seems pretty good. It's pretty straight and strong. You don't want it too hard so that it's harder to sharpen off. But, we'll just cut it down the bottom there. clear off all these sticks then I'm just going to use this knife to sharpen off the end get it sharp enough to spear a catfish sharpen it off just like that and although I'm not allowed to spear catfish here in Australia I'm going to show you that even if I went over to this creek right now that I'd have a lot of opportunities where are we catfish oh see it on the surface right there so that right there is a catfish there is a catfish there is another catfish. See that one? Now this just proves, like, I've got the spear right here. I'm not allowed to, but if I was in a survival situation, watch out! I've easily got, like, enough food to feed me for a couple months, even in this one pool right here. I'll throw this spear out, because we don't need that. We're not going spear fishing. But see that? Two catfish just swam past me just then. And I'm pretty sure there's heaps more. Ready? catfish and I think there's another one down here but yeah oh yeah there he is right there I've always like questioned myself like about my skills and everything how long I'd be able to survive in a place like this and I reckon if you did all the stuff that I told you today you'd be able to survive here for a long time like finding food that is easy as I literally caught a catfish with my hands today and that spear that I showed you how to make although we're not allowed to use it you could easily use it in a survival situation and get all of these catfish in this one pool. I feel like collecting water would definitely be the hardest part, but like, see those rapids up there? If you were going to collect water out of anywhere, make sure the water's running. Waterfalls are really good for collecting water. Don't drink it straight out of the waterfall. Make sure you boil it first. And yeah, but that's pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Whacked it in together all in a day. So if you like this kind of stuff, these survival kind of videos, I haven't been doing them too much recently, but doing a day like this really makes me want to film more of them. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, go and follow me on Instagram if you like this kind of stuff. My username's just Miller Wilson. I post a heap of different stuff over there. Send me a message. I'll try to reply to as many people as I can. And yeah, take a look at that. What an awesome day that was. Thank you guys so much. See you again in the next adventure.